All right, lads. Best pint of Guinness in Dublin, part two. Part one, we kind of had that sort of, I don't know what you call it, Fleet Street, Temple Bar area, some serious pints. Obviously, Bowes was the highlight. Unbelievable stuff. That's in the past. We're here now, the here and now. These four iconic pubs are sort of more on the outskirts of, of town, so if you don't want to go into the real busy bit of town, Tom Kennedy's Cobblestone Walsh's, of course, the Grave Diggers, an all-time spot. That's what we're going to cover today. So this is Best Point of Guinness in Dublin, part two, possibly with a part three coming up, book knows what we're doing. Shout out Davy Boy behind the camera. He done good the first day. He's back, back with the fucking pubes here. But we're rolling. Um, Tom Kennedy's, Tom Kennedy's, first pub today a really really good spot fun fact I've if you're a, a long time guru fan you'll know I did this in the early days I gave an 8.9 I always said I've been open I probably should have given a higher I was trying to be a harsh critic probably is up there with the grave diggers and bows but we'll see I've never been there since I don't know why I just haven't so I've only ever been there once had an unbelievable literally had one pint we're going in there now hopefully it's an absolute creamer to start off today I think it will be Right lads, an iconic day, Tom Kennedy's. I won't talk for too long because I just want to get straight into the point. Um, yeah, it oh, feels so good, it looks so good. You heard, I gave you the spiel outside, I don't need to give you again. I can't even speak, I'm stuttering over this point. Come on son, be good. Very, very good. I don't think it's as good as I expected. I put a lot of weight on this point. I don't think it's gonna be up in the nines, which I was hoping to give it. Probably won't be. But gotta get that out of the head. Still a very, very good point. Kind of lacking in shtick, I'll be honest, lads. <clears throat> it's not the be all and end all. But I can only, again, be like the palace. I went in with great expectations. I can only drink the pint put in front of me. Look, don't get me wrong, fantastic pint. But is it top two, top three in Dublin? This one right here? Not right now. Tough one. Oh God. <clears throat> the head, it's creamy, it's tasty. Shtick is minimal, which is not good. But I've got the I've got the owner pacing back and forth. I'd say he's got his eyes on the back of my head. You're gonna get yourself into some awkward spots, Dara. But we march on. Very good point. I also drank that extremely fast. I have to just be honest, it's it's still like a 8-4. I can't go any higher. I don't know how I'm gonna get out of this with the owner. <laughs> but it's look it's really really good. Like you talk about somewhere like Bittles of Belfast, the best point in Belfast, um it's up there with that. Really, really good point. But it's not giving me the same reaction as the last time. And that's, that's what happens with pubs. You've good days, you've bad days. I'm not saying it's a bad day, 8.5 or 8.4, very good score. But I was hoping to come here and put it into the nines club. But I just have to be totally honest with you lads, I cannot do that. 8.4 for Tom Kennedy's. It's, <laughs> it's so weird being disappointed given that sort of a score when in the past I'd give an 8.4 and I'd be over the moon and the pub would be like oh my god that's incredible but I know he's not going to like that score but what can I do 
8.4 for me. Great point. Right, lads. I actually noticed I always say right, lads. But sure, listen, maybe stick it on a t-shirt. Right, lads. Walsh's of Stony Batter. Unfortunately, my bad. It's the only pub I think I've ever been in in Stony Batter. But you know yourself, when you find a good one, you tend to stick to it. Uh, uh, known for a very good pint of Guinness. Hopefully we go in and we get one. Because that's what we're here for. We're not here for anything else. Let's go. Lads, this looks like the picture perfect point. Absolutely unbelievable looking. Not a drop. Scratch that. Not a bit of a bubble on the head of it. Oh. Oh. Oh, Dave, you ain't going nowhere. Cut the camera, we're staying here for the day. Fuck it all, that is unbelievable. And I subconsciously split the G. Split the G, I'm just, it's just ingrained in me. Four gulps is split the G. Don't even need to try. I'm bragging now, I'm bragging now. That is good fucking gear. You love to see it. really when the word delicious comes to mind you know it's good i used to have this weird sort of um theory i don't know if it's a theory is the right word but i call it the ice cream effect if sometimes it's like it's it's a perfect nice cold temperature very creamy and it nearly tastes like you're drinking ice cream i've never been able to master how to really explain my that thought process but it's happening right now the ice cream effect it's pure cream it's pure smooth it's just tasty delightful like overly delicious God, it's fucking quality that <clears throat> very good very 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 good yeah very happy with that Score time. I've have, have two different scores in my head. I'll have another sip, and I'll decide. But it, I, I would have been gutted if Walsh has disappointed me, because I love this pub. They've been always good to me, letting me film. I've done a few videos here, so you, you know. But but also, you can, if it's not good, it's not good. So it is very very good really good point very 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 happy with that 8.8 .8. monster score that's a monster score that probably puts it into the top five all time i feel like i gave it an 8.6 last time it's a little bit better it's and people say if you're talking that much about it why isn't it a 10 I can't be giving tens lads come on that ruined the whole game 8.8 .8. monster score Absolute creamy, tasty, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic pint, Walsh's. You fucking nailed it. Pretty sure Anto poured it. Top man. I interrupt this broadcast to quickly inform you how to get a squeaky clean penis and ball sack without nicking your nuts. We gotta pay the bills somehow, lads. Today's video is of course sponsored by none other than my good buddy all pals out flowers. Manscaped, they've just brought out the performance package 4.0. You thought the 3.0 was good, fuck it, fuck it in the bin, no use anymore. The 4.0 is the bee's knees. We've all been there, shaved the balls, little cuts everywhere, pseudo cream, every nah, it's a thing of the past, lads. The lawnmower 4.0 is your only man. Then when you get the deforestation out of the way, bosh, crop preserver, lash that on the lot, back sack and crack, and wherever else you've shaved, I won't judge. 
it won't chafe, simple as that. Mark my words, I guarantee that's a guru guarantee. Then of course, the Crop Reviver Ball Toner. When you're in desperate need, you're about to have a shag, you mightn't have had a shower that day. T -t 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 spritzy spritzy on the nuts. These nuts. She's going down there, or he's going down there. They won't know you haven't had a shower, you dirty bastard. You know the drill by now, lads. Pints20 is the code to get 20% off plus free shipping. Everything at me. Come on. And like I said before, you use that code. It doesn't just help out Manscaped. It helps me. It helps more videos in the future. More pints. What a life. Back to the video. All right. Yeah. Right, lads. The cobblestone. A pub that I would say. I'm trying to think of the right word. I would have, I would have a big affinity. Big word. Big boy word. A big affinity with this pub. Um, first time I was in it was about three or four years ago. Walked in, trad music player, and uh, did a review. I've been there many times since. Tom, the owner, is just an absolute legend. Um, it's where I was being paid to say this. I'm not. I'm sucking their balls, but it's just, it's up there with my, what, forget about Guinness. In terms of pubs, it could be my favorite pub in the world. I just think Cobblestone is just an absolutely incredible pub. Um, so much history, such a cool pub. Trad music, but not like the type of tempo bar, kind of bullshit trad music, just real, 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 real Ireland. I always say, I just said it to Davey behind the camera, if you're bringing someone who's not Irish, say someone comes from, I don't know, England, the US, anywhere, and you want to bring them to, you can only bring them to one pub, I'd probably bring them to the Cobblestone. Just go, it just has everything. Um, hopefully we go in and get a really good point of Guinness as well, <laughs> that'd be a bonus. Um, yeah, Cobblestone. Let's do it. Very, very good one. Very, very good one. You just know, like I'm doing this, I think I've hit about, must be, I must, I used to have a count, I don't have any more. Must be virgin on 200 pubs. So 200 pints and the rest is you. You know the second you have that first proper gulp. The score is pretty much made in your head and then you kind of keep drinking it and then you think, oh, well, maybe it's 0.1 up or 0.1 down, but you're not going to drink it and think that's a six and then finish it and think that's a 10. No way. So sometimes with places like this, it's nearly more a relief because you love the pub. You've raved about the pints before. If they give you a bad one, you have to say it, but it's not a bad one. So I am relieved more than anything. Just really good point. <clears throat> Hair is staying thick, stick looking good. What more can you say? Perfect temperature, perfect setting. Tastes really good. Can I run out of adjectives? I need to work on my vocabulary. No more needed. Not that I won't drink the rest of it, but for a score, can't remember what I gave it two years ago. It's it's right there, 8.5. Really, really good pints. Um, yeah, I fucking love this pub. I love these pints of Guinness. 8.5, proper cracking pint. Yeah, it's Come. Tom, we've seen your face on RTE more than Michal Martin in the last year. Uh, not to ask the same old mundane questions, but what's the general sense now? You come in here, let's be honest. I've been here probably five or six times. You come in, you can barely get a, a seat in the place. Yeah. This whole corner where we're sitting is about 10 musicians having a time of their life. Everyone's having a great time. You walk in, there's no music on. 
it's different but what what's the general consensus at the minute well it's kind of a today they announced so 90 percent of the population were vaccinated so yeah. it's kind of a very uh, progressive and very optimistic uh, future ahead of us uh, we have had we we're open here since june and i would say june was kind of a bit of a write-off because we couldn't have music at all, inside or outside. Uh, we have had music for uh, maybe the last three or four weeks outdoors, right. and we're considering moving some of it indoor. But it's all about the vaccination, and it's all about uh, the safety of the musicians and the safety of, the, of our customers and the staff as well. So. And do you have a timeline of having 10 musicians along this wall and the pub full, even if, okay, everyone has to have the COVID cert, but have you any sort of a time? I know this whole October 22nd, we won't go into it too much, but what's in your head? Well, October 22nd is a kind of a, a, a guideline for everybody, yeah. but uh, we're probably going to try and have music indoor next week. Um, we have, maybe we've progressed to having, uh, at the moment, music on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from eight o'clock. So it's only one session per day, but, before this there was like 25 sessions a week you know so it was it was it was continuous there's no television here there's no other distractions other than music and singing and culture we used to have classes in the back here monday we had dancing classes yeah. tuesday with singing classes wednesday we had adult adult music classes right that's enough from the news reporter side of me i as you know tom i i deal in guinness Absolutely. and you do I, I love the pub anyway, I do, I, I'm not just saying that, I said it outside, I just really, really, I don't say it about many pubs, I've been to about 200 on my travels, I just really love this pub, just so happens the Guinness is great as well, and I, I like to ask a lot of people, in, in your opinion, doesn't have to be some mad answer, what separates a good pint of Guinness from a great pint of Guinness? Well I think, you know, um, Guinness in their wisdom, they handed out the, the care of the lines to the publican like maybe 30 years ago and left it at that and the publican was in charge of quality control and it didn't always work yeah. now we were always fairly conscious of this here and we kind of went with whatever instructions we were given but they have come back in now and they are sending in a team of people every couple of weeks to clean the lines and check that everything is okay and i would say i would say there is no reason now for a bad point now if you're getting a bad point or something desperately wrong so so would that mean there's no real secret yeah. it's just do your best Absolutely. do what they tell you clean the lines yeah. do all that stuff there's no magic yeah. secret but you probably some places do it more than others and that brings great point. well one of the one of the kind of uh, drawbacks i suppose would be the length of a pipeline that you need okay, that's what from we're here for. That's what yeah from uh, from your keg to your to the glass so we are fairly lucky we we are um, we have a basement here yeah. and our cold room is directly under the taps here and uh, we, uh, we have a very short draw so yeah. i would think that is a big contributor i heard that a lot and even some some pubs literally have to take the keg under the fucking under the tap and it's it's about a six inch so yeah and um, have have a like a hundred yard draw yeah. before yeah. it gets there you know and that would affect it you know yeah. well that's a little that's probably a little nugget of knowledge then the shorter the line well not the shorter but if it's a short enough line straight up from the basement um all right tom that's all we need we won't keep you all day you're a celebrity like yourself so we might get an old tune or something going in the background <laughs> right bang on right lads it's not every day you get to come to the grave diggers and review the pint of Guinness. Uh, I did it two years ago and the rest was history. I mean, just an incredible place, an incredible location. And one thing, David behind the camera, I want you to pan around. I don't think people realize how just weird a spot this pub is in. It's, it's obviously beside Glasnevin Cemetery. Everyone knows that. That's why it's called the Grave Diggers. If you don't know the story, lads used to dig graves, come in here for their pints. 200 odd years ago 150 years ago the pub was 108 years old seven generations we know the spiel but just it's just on this it's just in this little housing estate in Glasnevin it has no right to be probably has no right to be here it has no right to be as good a pint as it is but it just is it's one of the most incredible pubs 
on this planet and arguably the best pint of Guinness on this planet. So, Grave Diggers, John Cavanagh, what can you say? We'll go in, we'll have a pint. I don't even think there's space inside, but we'll get a, we'll get a bit of footage inside and this is it, this is the life. You know, when you close the eyes, it's magic. Uh, we're in the snug, which I believe... Can you tell me when's the last time this snug was open? So, yeah, I remember being here last year. We were having food inside. The lounge, in the restaurant, the lounge part wasn't open. And Kieran was saying the snug is being, being reopened for the first time in about 50 years or something. So to sit in the Gravedigger snug is an absolute honor. I call the Grave Diggers, this whole the little area out there, it's God's back garden. He made this place just to serve Guinness. Um, yeah, what else can you say? I mean, you, you don't even need to, you come to the Grave Diggers and you're talking to Pine. 9.3 last time. All right, Chief. Oh, be je Jesus, you've been shooed away. Yeah, I mean, the standard's never gonna go down here. I gave it 9.3 last time, I can't give it any less. It's just everything about this place. The, the furniture. If, if I said to you the furniture hasn't been changed in 108 years, you'd think, what a kip. It's the opposite. It's just absolutely incredible. It's the best pub on the planet. The Grave Diggers, 9.3. Can't change the score. Just, I've run out of words to describe this place. An incredible, incredible pub, incredible establishment. 170 plus years, seven generations of family. It's, it's just, it just pips the rest. An absolute iconic spot. That's the Grave Diggers. Good luck, thanks for watching. Squadrons passed me by